Hello and welcome to Geology, a channel dedicated to making concepts in biology simple, easy to understand and interesting. This video today is a continuation of our previous video, the cell, the unit of life, which was requested by one of our viewers. In this video, we are going to see every organelle of the cells in details. Prior to that, let us quickly recollect what we studied in the previous uh, video. So we saw the introduction to the cell that the cell is um, the unit of life. It is the structural and functional unit of life. We also went through a little bit of history of how the cells were discovered and who discovered the different parts. We saw the cell theory where we also saw uh, that all organisms are made up of cells and all cells arise from pre-existing cells. We saw the difference between unicellular and multicellular organisms. We identified quite a few differences between plant and animal cells. We also uh, saw certain organelles like the cell membrane, which is a semi-permeable membrane and regulates the movement of uh, uh, molecules across uh, uh, the membrane in and out of the cell. We saw the cell wall which is made up of cellulose and uh, provides structural support uh, to the cell and is found only in the plant cell. We saw the cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance which fills up the cell and has all the organelles inside it. Then we uh, saw the structure of the primitive cells, which are the prokaryotic cells, which do not have a nucleus, but instead have a nucleoid. And uh, where the organelles are uh, not membrane bound and are also primitive. We saw the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. If you would like to go back and visit any of these topics or if you have not seen the previous video I would suggest that you go through it. It will be a very good idea to even recollect all the points. The link to the uh, part one is given in the description for quick reference. Now let us further move on to the different organelles within the eukaryotic cells. Now let's start with the nucleus. Nucleus as we saw is centrally located. It is an oval or a spherical body. It is protected by double layered membrane. Yeah. And inside the nucleus, there is again a fluid structure which is known as the nucleoplasm. And the nuclear uh, membrane, it separates the nucleoplasm from the cytoplasm. Nucleus contains again a dense structure which is known as nucleolus. And it has an entangled mass of thread-like structures which is known as the chromatin material. And it is this chromatin material which contains the genetic material. And at the time of cell division, this chromatin material starts becoming uh, thick rod-like structures which are known as the chromosome. The next organelle we are going to see is endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is an irregular network of double membrane and it is um, it has a lumen which is fluid filled and it is present across the cytoplasm. So this network it f uh, helps in making a kind of a supporting framework and hence it is also known as the skeleton of the cell. Endoplasmic reticulum is of two types, the rough ER and the smooth ER. The rough ER is called so because under the microscope it appears rough because of the presence of these dot-like structures which are the ribosomes and the smooth ER does not have these ribosomes and hence under the microscope they appear very smooth. So functionally as I said endoplasmic reticulum forms the supporting framework of the cell and the rough endoplasmic reticulum, since it contains ribosomes, helps in protein synthesis. And uh, these proteins could either be used for making uh, different uh, parts of the cells or they may also be used uh, as enzymes or hormones. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum secretes lipids. 
Now endoplasmic reticulum being a network of membranous structure, it helps to provide an expanded surface area. So a lot of biochemical reactions can also happen on the endoplasmic reticulum. So basically four functions, supporting framework of the cell, uh, rough ER helps in making proteins, smooth ER secretes lipids, and ER provides an expanded surface uh, area for biochemical reaction. Now what are peroxisomes? Peroxisomes are also known as microbodies. And these are also very simple uh, membrane bound sac like structures which are found uh, in the cell and they also contain very powerful enzymes which are the oxidative enzymes, the oxidases and the catalases. They carry out oxidative reactions which are very important for removing toxic substances in these, uh, from the cell and uh, peroxisomes are very commonly found in kidney and liver cells. Let us now see Golgi apparatus. Golgi complex was discovered by Camillo Golgi and hence the name. This Golgi apparatus is also known as dictyosomes in case of plant cells. Yeah. And uh, Golgi apparatus consists of a set of smooth flattened sacs. These sacs are known as cisterni and these cisternies are stacked one above the other you know uh, parallelly. Functionally uh, the Golgi apparatus is the secretory organ of the cell and it helps in the formation of secretory vessels and uh, lysosomes. So Golgi apparatus has uh, two ends one is called the cis phase and the other is called the trans phase cis phase is the uh, is uh, the direction through which golgi apparatus receives its contents and trans phase is the site through which it packages all these uh, materials and then dispatches these packages in the form of secretory vessels or lysosomes the inner uh, gap of these cisterni are known as the lumen. Let us see the lysosomes. These are interesting organelles. They are also known as suicide bags. You know, sounds a little creepy. Uh, but yes, these are sacs or vesicle uh, structures which contain very powerful digestive enzymes. These are the hydrolytic enzymes. And uh, the structure is very simple. It is uh, bounded by a, uh, a membrane. And uh, then these uh, lysosomes, they function as intracellular digestive systems. So they are also known as digestive bags. And they destroy the foreign materials like bacteria or any other, uh, uh, you know, uh, damaging external structure that comes in. Uh, it is the lysosome and its enzymes which uh, digest or destroy these external uh, uh, these external bodies. In case uh, of an old cell or a damaged cell, it is the same ly lysosome which releases its hydrolytic enzymes and then digests the damaged or the dead cell inside which it is contained and hence it is also known as the suicidal bags or uh, it is also known as digestive bags. Let us now look at another very interesting organelle called the mitochondria. Mitochondria is also known as the powerhouse of the cell and that is because um, inside mitochondria the energy is produced um, because mitochondria has sites for cell respiration. I'll explain that in a bit. So let's see the structure first. So micro mitochondria are rod shaped organelles. They are also surrounded by double membrane. Um, in my 
diagram here, you can see that the outer membrane, I have made it in red color for you to understand easily. The inner membrane is the orange one. So the outer membrane is smooth, whereas the inner membrane has these finger-like structures, which are known as cristae. Right. So on these cristae are the F1 complex wherein the cell respiration uh, takes place and uh, mitochondria is the part where the food molecules are broken down to produce ATP um, and ATP basically is uh, you know the energy which is stored in in the form of a chemical which is called the ATP or adenosine triphosphate. So the body uses the energy stored in the ATP for doing various functions, right? So which is why mitochondria is also known as the powerhouse of the cell. Mitochondria is also an interesting organelle because um, it contains its own DNA and it contains its own ribosomes. We have seen that DNA is present in the nucleus. So the other part where there is a presence of some genetic material is the mitochondria which has its own DNA and it also has its own ribosomes which are in itself another cell organelle. Let us now look at these big spaces in the cells which are known as the vacuoles. These are present both in plant and animal cell but in case of animal cells they are many in numbers and they are very small whereas in case of plant cell we can find one or two very big uh, vacuoles and these are certain clear spaces in the cytoplasm. In case of uh, plant cells because they are very big they tend to push the organelles to the sides and the vacuoles are used mainly for storage of excess water, waste materials, soluble pigments etc. And, uh, they provide turgidity and rigidity to the plants and uh, plant cell and uh, hence they are they generally filled with what is known as the cell sap let us now look at a very interesting organelle which is specific to plants which is known as the plastids plastids are membrane bound organelles and they contain pigments so based on the type of pigment they contain, they can be either leucoplast, chromoplast or chloroplasts. Their function also depends on the type of pigment that they contain. Leucoplasts are non-pigmented plastids and they are responsible for synthesizing and storing macromolecules like starch, lipids, proteins. And they are found uh, very much in roots, tubers and sometimes in seeds as well. Chromoplasts are plastids which synthesize and store pigments other than chlorophyll. So in case of fruits, flowers and roots, uh, the vibrant color that we see is because of the pigments, uh, the yellow, orange or red pigments uh, in these chromoplasts. These pigments could be carotenoids, anthocyanins and they are responsible for the red, orange or the yellow colors in case of foliage as well as in case of fruits. The third one is the chloroplast. These are again very special because chloroplasts are the most well-known types of plastids. They are responsible for photosynthesis. And photosynthesis, we know, is a very, very important uh, process which happens only in plants and it helps to convert sunlight into um, chemical energy. So it is the chloroplast which helps in photosynthesis. Yeah. So let us look at the structure of chloroplast a little more. So chloroplast is the plastid which contains chlorophyll and chlorophyll captures the light energy. Chloroplasts also have double uh, layered structure, the outer membrane and the inner membrane and chloroplasts, um, like I said, you know, they have uh, an internal network of membrane bound uh, structures which are known as the thylakoids these ones. 
So thylakoids have lumen and then the fluid which is filled inside the chloroplast is known as the stroma. So these thylakoids are stacked one above the other and then together this stack of thylakoids is known as the granum. And between the uh, thylakoid st uh, stacks or between the grana are what are known as the lamella which collect, uh, connects these, these uh, different uh, uh, granum and it is here that the light dependent reactions or the photosynthesis takes place. With this we come to an end of this section of the video and uh, stay with me for uh, the second part where we are going to take up question and answers as usual. If you like the contents of the video please do like share and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions or clarifications please feel free to ask them in the comment section. See you in the next part.